Hey, what is this beast? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Scotty Allen Day. As organized theft keeps growing at an alarming rate, stores are facing the challenge of keeping their doors open. Walmart is building a police station in one store in Atlanta that was damaged by arson. Uh, basically, the people that went in and did uh, a massive, uh, what do you want to call a blitz, and they went in and they set fires just to uh, deter people away from where they were at. And, well, store burnt down. Now, uh, the police station and, I mean, Walmart and the city of Atlanta decided to fund this police mini station inside of the Walmart. I mean, it's it's, it's obvious. Other other Walmarts have removed self-checkout kiosks and added more ca uh, cashiers. Do you think this would be enough to be able to deter theft? Let me know in the comment section. So uh, it has me thinking that if all stores have police officers and um, police offices inside, well, it couldn't be possible because most cities have staffing issues with. Uh, I mean, for basically the, uh, basically law enforcement. Law enforcement is really short-staffed. Could it, uh, it could really not be possible, and it's not economical. Uh, however, cities that do have a problem with re retail theft should have some way to put a stop to the rampant theft issue, and if a store is facing issues so great that they close stores and create food deserts in cities. I mean, what what other option do they have? And I think the solution might be to end all the self-checkout kiosks and hire cashiers to, so that there are more eyes on the floor. I also see that in the future there will be more membership-based shopping, shopping facilities for in-person shopping so it could possibly deter theft, kind of like Costco. Reading news about all the shoplifting going on in the United States, Costco's membership and staffing is the correct formula for deterring theft. Best Buy and Lowe's have limited self-service kiosks and more staffing on the floor. More human eyes on the floor looking after the store. Lowe's and Best Buy uh, may end up, end up with some kind of the uh, right formula. Uh, Lowe's Best Buy and Costco also has very few, if not, self-checkouts. And the properly staffed at these locations, high-priced merchandise is also un under lock and key. Could Walmart and Target eventually follow Costco's model? Or is Costco just lucky that they haven't been the target of organized theft? Yet I could see that in the future that membership cards and more controlled entrances and exits will be the solution down the road as our honor system crumbles. I'm just basing off my notes. Now, basically, I, th I personally think that Costco is, you know, basically the perfect formula because, well, if you have a massive amount of people to run into the store and they're going to go and try and steal as much as they can, uh, with the size of the merchandise that's at Costco, how many, if maybe two boxes, they could be able to run out of store. <laughs> you can't, it's not like, it's not like going to Walmart and grab a big rack of, of, uh, clothes. But then also I was reading some more other articles about, uh, Costco and, well, Costco's in, in insanely busy at just about all locations. My wife is looking at me for me. <laughs> Insanely busy at all locations. So if I went, went in there with a massive shopping cart or uh, one of those big push carts and filled it full of merchandise and went to go and try and run out of the store, I only have one exit. And if I was trying to make, make a beeline towards that exit, more than likely somebody's going to be on a radio because every single Costco employee has a radio. And they're saying, well, it looks like we're going to have somebody making a beeline for the entrance. And, well, all the guy has to do is push one button. And down comes the rolling gates. 
Well, he's the thief is stuck. He's going to see that he's stuck and he can't get through the line, so he's going to try and make it out to, out to the exit with no cart. It's plain and simple. It's, it's a no-brainer. They have a chain link fence between the entrance and the exit. You come in through the entrance, and there's only one way out. Uh, and you really can't take a, uh, a box of Fruit Loops and hide it underneath your shirt and not make it be obvious. You can't go and buy a steal a big thing of apples or even chicken. Where are you gonna put it? Unless you have a unless you have a pair of uh, '90s uh, bag and sagging pants, you ain't gonna go nowhere. So I'm just I'm just curious of how, what everything is gonna be molding into. Uh, it's either you're gonna shop online. But if you want to shop in person, which uh, Walmart has already said that they're exploring the possibilities of uh, memberships, and you come in and you scan your membership card and you go into the store, but that's not really going to solve the problem. Because Walmart, I believe, has three entrances most of the time. You go through the garden center, and then you have your, your main entrance leaving the store. But it's not set up to be controlled. Uh, you can walk out from what the cashier is, walk around, and go right back into the store. So there's no controlled entrance, no controlled exits. But if they have a police station, or if they end up doing, uh, you know, they hire a private police firm to be able to uh, to do this, I don't know what's going on. But uh, I know of one store that I read about that's down in uh, Arkansas. And basically what the store owner did, he got tired of theft. And he said that he's, he's got to put, he put a sign on, on his front door and says it's going to be a 200% markup if you steal from this store. So if you stole any item from the store, he's going to mark it up 200%. And it says it's a, uh, it's a five finger markup. Now, when I read about five finger markup, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Five finger markup, five finger discount. Okay, kind of goes hand in hand. So if I steal a one dollar candy bar, all of a sudden it's going to be cost, it's going to cost me two hundred bucks for one can candy bar. If I stole a ten dollar shirt, I'm already in a felony level. The guy's a genius, and uh, he's already prosecuted several several cases, and. All of a sudden, he's really not having that big of a problem. Now, the thing I'm thinking about is, is, is he have, not having a problem because he has to sign on his door? Or is he not having a problem because he doesn't have self-service kiosks and he has proper staffing to watch the store? So, either way, if I stole two shirts from that one particular store for $10, that's $4,000. That's almost grand theft. Or is it grand theft? So what models do you think would be beneficial to ending a lot of this shoplifting? I mean, we have organized theft and we have, you know, one person walking in to steal a couple of steaks. Well, I can see somebody that's, whose family's starving and they go in there and they steal food so they can be able to feed the family. Compared to somebody that's going in and stealing uh, 2,000 bottles of aspirin to sell to somebody else that's going to ship it on a pallet and, and uh, send it to uh, California or New York for resale. So, what do you guys think? What do you guys think would be able to solve this entire shoplifting pandemic? Let me know in the comment section below. So if you like this video, like the video, uh, share the video with your friends. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And like always, keep on rocking.